the pandemic situation has prompted the leaders all around the world to take the extra step and go the extra mile to engage their employee and to maintain the productivity in their organization. So today on our Top Talk session, we have Shalini Chopra, founder and global mentor of Diverse Events to discuss with us the impact the pandemic had on the employee's performance, as well as, you know, the steps that can be taken in order to maintain the productivity in the organization. Shalini Chopra is a senior strategic HR business leader with over 21 years of diverse experiences in business operations and strategic HR roles. She is also a successful coach for senior leaders and has impacted thousands of lives, including senior and executive leaders in international companies through behavioral and EQ coaching. She is a DE&I champion who has been supporting this mission for close to a decade and has been actively working on building a robust woman leadership pipeline. She recently founded Diversity Wins and is partnering with several organizations around the globe to drive the agenda further. She is awarded the Exceptional Women of Excellence Award by Women Economic Forum and she gets her strength from music, meditation, and bringing up smile to people. A very warm welcome to you, Shalini, for this Top Talk session with us. Thank you so much, Dipanita, and uh, thank you for those, that kind introduction. And uh, looking forward to a nice interaction. Thank you so much, Shalini. So start off with the, you know, discussion, Shalini. The first thing that comes to mind in this pandemic situation is how it has impacted the lives of every people some way or the other. So how, in your opinion, has it impacted the lives of the employees and how it has, you know, affected the performance of the organizations in general? Okay, so it has impacted lives. Every life on this planet certainly has got impacted and impacted significantly. And if we talk of the business side and the organizations, you know, worldwide, we were already seeing huge transformations because of the VUCA world, you know, for the last over a decade. And uh, organizations were working on changing, accelerating the change. And there was ground to be covered still. Mm -hmm. And then this crisis hit us all. And of a size and nature that was unprecedented, challenge level that was never handled by anybody, anybody on this earth. So the teams just, the leaders had to really be very fleet-footed first to ensure that, you know, their teams are taken care of. And... Uh, in terms of impact to work, the teams that just needed a computer to function, they smoothly transitioned to out of office mode in terms of operations. But a lot of other se sectors like manufacturing, R&D, clinical trials, hospitality, and the, there's a long list there, construction, uh, had many such, you know, many such touch in, uh, intensive businesses were completely brought to a standstill for a few months. So impacting businesses, impacting, uh, you know, the daily work, impacting the earnings, impacting the feeling of security and in the backdrop of, you know, so much of, uh, you know, challenge related to health and you know, the pandemic caused the health challenges. So the teams that worked remotely, especially in tier one cities, initially saw their productivity and performance going up, you know, especially because there was, you know, adequate and a lot of time saved, you know, related to travel to office. They used to spend at least two to four hours in commuting to office. And that time was saved working from home. But thereafter, there was a dip seen in the performance. Not performance, more on the productivity side. The significance of these social interactions with colleagues, you know, is very critical. And after the initial three, four months, everybody started feeling that, okay, this is not a short-term thing. We don't know how long this will continue. And that started creating some, you know, disturbance. And a human being is made of various emotions, you know, rational aside 
one is driven by emotions and that is where a lot of anxiety a lot of uh, you know uh, feeling of being left behind sense of insecurity started creeping in right in fact there was a survey that bcg did for you know to, to around 1200 people worldwide india americas europe mm -hmm. and they found that for almost 50% of the people who transition to work from home model almost 50% you know felt that the collaborative tasks things like working in teams and interacting with clients etc saw a dip in the output so collaboration did take and there is a lot that rides on successful collaboration with companies so yes that was you know one important dimension the other dimension was all the social side the social connect that employees feel working together in the same office so uh, it is that uh, in fact you know there there's a future of work research that has done Uh, that has been done by the Virgin Group, and they found out that seventy percent of employees say that friends at work is the most crucial element to a happy working life, right? And that is what stops them from changing organizations. You know, they would refuse offers from other companies because they like to hang around with the friends at the workplace, the current workplace, which again got impacted. through remote working through the time you know people were you know, always in switched on mode but did not have those coffee conversations you know and uh, switching from one meeting to the other there was really no time window left for informal conversations managers did the best to you know communicate frequently with their teams but uh, again these conversations tend to become more transactional by nature the softer aspects of the human need of connection do not get at first right so all these aspects are you know still being uh, thought through by the hr teams and organizations as to how do we minimize the impact in drop in productivity further some some uh, uh, organizations have uh, brought in um formal coaching to their leaders and managers so that every conversation that they have with their teams can have a significant impact towards positive and higher engagement so very important points that you raised you know because country like india wasn't prepared for remote working model because that was something which was always on the paper but never put into practice and this pandemic situation somehow you know uh, like uh, fast forwarded the process and shifted from work from office to work from home continue uh, like in an in an instant and uh, as you mentioned that in the initial time people thought that yes we do not have to go to work and it is good that we don't have to travel that much but ultimately the informal conversation which also you know contributes to a lot to the personality of the employee as well as to the culture of the organization right so that is something which got lost in the process yeah so great views shared chalini so uh, the next question that comes to my mind uh, when you talked about you know the engagement and the informal things that uh, used to take place in the office work culture but doesn't right now and some uh, somewhere it becomes transactional as you, as you mentioned the you know the process so uh, like what extra miles or what extra effort should the organization you know put or the managers and the leaders can take the proactive measures so that you know the employee engagement part as well as the productivity of the organization can be maintained so here i'd like to start with the fantastic job that the hr teams across the board have done in terms of you know first of all uh, taking care of every employee's ability to work remotely ensuring whoever you know of course the role based and uh, industry based constraints are there but for within organizations hr was one who organized all of that and also ensured that people are taken care of first of all they were totally switched on and absolutely proactive in communicating with every employee to check if they are fine and that's a humongous task yes because hr teams 
typically are quite small, right? And organization sizes are large. So comparatively. So, I mean, in fact, here I'd like to remind all of us about the, that uh, great uh, reiteration that Simon Sinek continuously does that leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is about taking care of the people in your charge. So it's absolutely mandatory and critical that people are taken care of and leaders have that responsibility. And to start with, leaders must listen, listen, and listen. That is one thing I have always emphasized in every role, every interaction that I've had with leaders. Because empathy starts with genuine listening. You know, the open house sessions that were already part of organizational frameworks have now shifted to online meetups. And even leaders who communicated less frequently have been you know, strongly advised by their HR leaders and CHROs to meet more often and communicate openly. And dialogue has been encouraged so that the teams get a chance to express freely and clarify their doubts, their apprehensions, you know, anything that is bothering them because again, there's so much uncertainty in the world and there's so much uncertainty in the business world, which obviously impacts every employee and they, they know it. They understand that it impacts them. So for them to be aware of where their organization is headed and how their leaders are thinking about them is very significant. Then in organizations which are totally based on working in office right, format and factory units, work had completely halted for a few months. Again, there were companies which had some BUs which could seamlessly work remotely and then some BUs were related to research or manufacturing, etc. So how do you bring that balance in terms of measuring performance, in terms of assuring your people that yes, everybody's jobs are safe? Because that was one question that everybody was thinking about. You know, will I also get impacted? Right? Sure. Because there were many cases that yeah. happened where people were let go, right? So employees feared major salary cuts, job losses, and those fears were mitigated upfront through communications, right? So in large organizations, in you know, every kind of organization, I've seen that happening. And that has helped ease the anxiety levels to a large extent, which impacts the level of you know output eventually because performance is always an outcome of various factors true right in one word we can call it the culture of the organization but the culture itself is built through various factors every interaction helps right so and in fact in global organizations the needs of the employees are again different mm -hmm. You know, because some other people are based out of the US, Europe, India. Now, India has been used to uh, support staff at home, right? And a lot of house help is managed through them. Right. But US is always used to doing things themselves. So their workload in terms of the home front responsibilities didn't increase to that extent, didn't change to that extent. But India, there was a huge change of that. Right. So there has to be, you know, there has to be that sen sensitivity, which, of course, you know, good leaders and managers took up on themselves by minimizing meetings, you know, video calls and Zoom calls and meetings also actually take up a lot of bandwidth. Right. Mm -hmm. And so minimize the meetings, make them more effective, give them as much flexibility in terms of schedule. So, again, that's where a lot of leaders have pitched in. To support their teams. In, I mean, helping my manager by picking up things that, you know, he or she is feeling really under pressure of, you know, delivering. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Just hand it over. I'll pitch in. Those day-to-day, -day, you know, initiatives by leaders has really helped ease off the pressures that, you know, have been added to the work life. 
and leaders who have le- learned the art and science of coaching actually do much better and, and have done much better in these situations because they are able to have coaching conversations sure. not just formal feedback so the teams learn and get a lot of support and this support is often covertly given so it's not made a big deal and done overtly but it is slipped in so well that the you know in the unconscious mind of the teams that they are able to just you know sail through much smoothly and again coaching like i always emphasize it really helps when leading people and taking care of people because coaches understand the people a lot better right yes. and in this scenario where isolation is the you know the devil over here right so this has helped great so uh, you know the next thing that i would like to uh, ask you is that you know um, companies that follow the year end appraisal process or uh, where the frequency of the appraisal or frequency of the performance review or engagement is not uh, you know very robust so mm-hmm. in the, in scenarios like this where managers and employees are away from each other somewhere the performance appraisal process entirely is not very relevant right so in your opinion what is the you know the best way to have an employee performance evaluation in a scenario like this you mean to say which is uh, less formal and less structured Uh, used to informal ways of giving feedback yes uh, giving feedback as well as well as you know uh, uh, like for example in this kind of scenario what is the best mode of uh, having a performance management evaluation like not only basing it on the appraisal process now again the performance evaluation has gone through some radical changes in many organizations some some are still catching up and they will be implementing it for fi 22 but uh, i think it's important for us to you know look at the context first that when this lockdown or when this pandemic really hit us hard it started from the western world as compared to india so there were different phases or different timelines rather when different countries got impacted and so the employees in various locations got impacted because of that and for a lot of organizations that was a time when the next year's budgets every and you know targets were supposed to be planned all of that got impacted because of the uncertainty like even if my 50, 50% of my bus are able to work remotely the other 50 are completely halted now how do i bring in a variation in terms of you know the approach of goal setting and the approach of how people will be you know assessed in terms of their contribution uh, throughout the year that balance was a difficult question so a lot of organizations kind of deferred it that they continued in the same mode as the previous year okay so work was there but they continued without setting some formal targets and that's when it was you know analyzed and decided that let's have agile goals right because having a firm goal approach a annual goal target will not help in this situation in fact you know one one of the ceos uh, i worked with 5 6 years ago he has always you know he was a big proponent rather he is of Uh, ongoing feedback okay and he he believes that you know he brought in brought me in with the simple agenda that shall we transform the culture of my organization so that every conversation is a feedback okay. every conversation is should be treated like a feedback we don't need to have a separate one, right and it should be a two way feedback the team member also should have an equal right to express right and of course there will be a learning curve for that and i'm ready for that so starting with you know maybe quarterly frequency we go on to a monthly frequency and then come to you know kind of a daily every interaction based feedback and that is where i see the you know world heading now because our younger population is especially the millennials 
they they are very expressive they not follow anybody for authority they they will truly respect someone and they expect to be respected for their their strengths right, right. so they giving them an open opportunity to share their inputs and their feedback about the system about the processes about the leaders is is one big shift that is you know currently happening right mm -hmm. so agile goal setting having a two way conversation related to feedbacks bringing in frequency higher frequency while maybe formalizing it to quarterly or six monthly because for some organizations even who are still in that annual feedback mechanism for them to switch directly to a quarterly mode will be a big yes. you know change and it will make them very nervous so it has to be in a phased manner but uh, a lot of organizations are moving towards quarterly feedback mechanism and that is really helpful because it's it's any change that is required because of the feedback it can be implemented quickly and if the nature of change is such it has to be planned better then at least it is immediately made note of and put into the relevant you know planning exercise so employees get a feeling that they are being heard they are not just being you know criticized by the managers and what this this does is that this gives them a sense of engagement with the organization that they are contributing right. to the goal of the organization not just contributing to the tasks that are assigned to them and that is a significant shift in terms of uh, the performance actually the engagement and hence the performance of people and the overall you know environment of you know being motivated towards contributing great in insight shared uh, shalini you know the thing which you mentioned like those organization which have been following performance appraisal since a long time for them to you know at once implement every continuous aspect of it is not possible so they should start off slowly and gradually and then in, like incorporate the continuous aspect to their evaluation yeah in fact on the point on like okrs is a very well used and established you know framework but uh, i was recently discussing with a consultant to implement in the organizations i'm engaged with and they continue to reiterate that shalini the commitment has to be there first to this huge change if the commitment is there then we will be able to achieve it so that how does one gather that commitment is through the pre planning the pre work the conversations before bringing in or introducing such a change so that the rest of the actions are in line and every step is not like a big burden right to the managers right right absolutely so this brings me to my next question which is you know as you mentioned that uh, bringing in this continuous aspect as well as in terms of okr which requires a lot of commitment to it but uh, there are certain organizations which still doesn't have that sort of commitment in terms of goal orientation so according to you what are the steps that can be taken to have a better goal orientation as well as to help the employees in prioritizing you know their goals because in in this scenario where managers employees all being away from each other it, and conversations most people are not very open to it right having conversations with their manager on a regular basis sometimes the prioritize they prioritize wrong things at the wrong time right so how can that be managed okay let me take it in two steps now uh, in terms of uh, the consistency and focus to establish and communicate goals okay to achieve that target i think metrics and analysis of metrics plays a big role so where whichever organizations are still facing this challenge hr has to work towards designing some smart metrics which highlight 
the dollar impact of the delay or you know uh, the efficacy of the goal setting process because it all starts with goal setting in quite a few organizations just driving the discipline of goal setting i'm talking about pre pandemic times also okay was a big big uh, activity okay. and we had to go into with the ceo support we had to go into a very non negotiable mode that if you are not doing it on time this is the impact to the people on your team now as far as hr is concerned every team member is important it's not like you know be you specific so that was the other risk we had to cover that okay if we get very hard on a particular business unit and the leaders there but the employees within that unit are still working hard they stand to suffer because the leaders are not doing their part of the responsibility right mm -hmm. so that balance also had to be brought in so that the the linkage of the leader's performance to these activities was established very strongly so the weightage to any of these people management related responsibilities were high on the kpi list and the you know impact on their performance the leaders performance and that's how we achieved the change in quite a few organizations like you are aware i have also consulted with organizations mm -hmm. right so that was one bit so to kind of summarize that point one has to measure the impact because there is a damage to the financial results because of this right right so that has to be designed and that has to be presented to the cfo and the ceo and then things will go boom 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 very quickly so that orientation of you know business and finances Mm -hmm. has to increase significantly within the hr teams right right because till now they have been talking only of the human side or you know behavior side of things etc or the process side of things but integrating it to some of the tangible benefits is very important and we'll see more of that happening right so that's one part of the question what was the other other uh, related point you asked one was the organization struggling and the other was people uh, are not very open prioritizing right? the goals like how do they prioritize what to do at what time and what they can do it later on you know like prioritizing the goals that are set for them and have a clear idea about what to prioritize that is that has to be built in within the goal setting framework itself right and they have to the leaders have to then coach their teams so that it can be trickled down and to your point that people are often you know not very open about expressing or sharing feedback that is something that every organization needs to work on in terms of building the culture of trust mm -hmm. there is so much conversation that has happened in the last 15 months about building a you know a psychologically safe place right psychological safety being the utmost and most high priority need today mm -hmm. but my point is why is it even being called out separately the trust should already be there and if the trust is there a person a team member will be always open to express and the trust always flows from the top it is the seniors who have to walk the talk and another very important point here is and that ownership is for us all of us as hr leaders we actually uh, bring in new terms like you know psychological safety compassion empathy whatever there are various human behavioral terms that we bring in and we highlight that a particular behavior is more needed in a certain context but every behavior the change of label is very easy for us to do on the process documents but every behavioral change needs huge commitment right and it needs coaching it needs development it needs interventions so whenever we talk of any such change we must also talk of how to achieve it true and then it will be a 
robust plan, it will be an achievable plan. Otherwise, you would only move on maybe in a year or two again, come up with some new labels and not much would have changed on the ground. And that is what discourages the employees also. You know, they often think, oh, this is the new jargon that HR is using. That's what happens. Those are the corridor conversations. So their commitment is dropped, you know, not there even before we start. Okay. So end-to-end -end change has to be thought of and implemented. A very practical point which you raised, you know, HR people are often bashed by other employees that they come up with so many things but at the end when we want actually want to see what has been done and what has been implemented nothing nothing changes so not only making the plan but also you know acting on how to do it is very important yes so you know this brings on to my last question to you that will be in case of check-ins right now you know since mm -hmm this kind of a scenario so there must be a balance maintained between not overdoing it and not doing nothing at all right so according to you what is the frequency of a check-in should be so that it becomes effective and also not become bothersome for both the leaders and the employees now i will give a <laughs> Not so popular answer, but a very practical answer and answer which makes a difference on the ground. Okay. Yeah. This really has to be seen. I, as a manager, have to be well aware of the needs of every team member. There could be some who need more room to operate. They don't want to be, you know, spoken to as frequently. Okay. While there could be some who need almost a weekly conversation, right? What the difference has to be understood. That's what people management is. Yes, HR can prescribe and, you know, can recommend that you do it at least quarterly or, you know, the, the, the informal check-in should happen at least once within 10 days, once in every 10 days. So that, especially in the pandemic situation, right. so that, you know, the comfort of every team member is, uh, is understood and the need also. But other than that, it is really to be seen of what is effective for various team members. And the very important dimension of this is also how am I as a leader equipped for these one-on-one -on -one conversations, especially because check-ins is a new term, but one-on-one -on -one conversation is something that has always been there, right, right in organizations. And there are real cases where conversations with managers cause a lot of stress, stress to the team member because of the way the leader might conduct. True. Right. So before suggesting the timelines, I think, again, the very important part is to prepare the managers to communicate with their teams. Right. So listening, empathy are two key needs that all of them have to continuously learn. Right. And then taking feedback be open to listening from them also about rather than, you know, getting authoritative. About it. Sure. And if these three things are in place, then anywhere between a weekly or 10 day informal check-in and uh, a quarterly formal way of, you know, tracking this feedback can be very helpful. The important thing in both the cases will be formal or informal that the manager takes notes. Okay. And that's where HR can help by providing some guidance or templates as to what are the minimum, you know, inputs that they should gather so that the, you know, case can be tracked. Every employee's progress and morale and engagement can be traced through the timeline. And it's not just a tick in the box exercise, True. right? And very important also is that what is 
it and HR as a function has to think seriously of what one people management related process are we going to take away from the managers so that they get time and bandwidth to do regular check-ins. Right, because again, overburdening them with processes and you know procedures is never going to work. True. In the outcome, so these are some of the key points. Very practical, very doable, and uh, they have worked wherever we have implemented positively. Great, great suggestions that you gave. You know, the managers need to understand each and every team member their requirement. Which most of the in most of the cases they fail to do right. So this is the time where coaching comes into effect and training comes into effect. Very well. They do do because we have not equipped them actually. True. You know when they move to the first first time the people management role, there are different competencies required for being people managers, and they have not got that training. And then more and more keeps getting added in terms of their responsibilities. So. Therefore, the you know the challenge gets bigger and bigger. True, true, absolutely. Thank you so much, Shalini, for sharing all the lovely insights that you shared, which are practical, which are doable. And in this scenario, I think every organization should follow in order to maintain their productivity and to generate a better results in terms of mental well-being of their employees as well as you know the work that they do. Thank you so much for your time and having this discussion. It was lovely interacting with you. Thank you so much for having me and you know giving the opportunity to share, you know, my thoughts and experiences. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.